INSEAD alumni have two men to thank for today's International Alumni Association. Jean-Marie Darjuzon is the founding president of the INSEAD Alumni Association and a 1960 MBA, and Michel Gauthier is the founding chairman of the INSEAD Alumni Fund, so you get the money together. I tried to. Um, and actually, you were one of the early MBA recipients, so when did you decide it was important to have an important, uh, an, an INSEAD degree rather than something like Harvard? What made you decide to do this? Well, at the time, I was just finishing the Ecole Polytechnique, which is a reputable French uh, school, but uh, most of the alumni of the Ecole Polytechnique go to the public service, and I was not so inter much interested to go to the service, uh, public service, and I was more interested to go to the private sector. And I had the opportunity to meet Claude Janssen at the time, who indicated to me that uh, a new school, a new business school, had been uh, started in, in Europe. Uh, and uh, it, w uh, it was at the time of the first promotion. The first promotion had already entered the school. And uh, so I decided to, to come. It was more interesting than uh, going to the States because of the length of the uh, study, one year versus two year and it was also less expensive. Uh, so I applied, and was uh, admitted, and uh, I and made are. a second promotion. Mr. Darjuzan, why did you decide to get a degree here? You know, I was in Dakar at that time, working for Texaco, and um, I heard about a school, a European school, a uh, European business school, and I think there were two words, uh, that's what I'm going to say in my speech, there are two words which were really very, uh, uh, how, how would you say, uh, attractive. attractive. Uh, one was Harvard because, you know, they always, they said that uh, they had the Harvard method and uh, the people who managed in Seattle were coming from Harvard. And Harvard for us, it was something, uh, you know, kind of an American dream. And uh, the American dream was coming to Europe and so, it, was interesting. And the second word was Europe. Europe, you know, the, the, the Rome Treaty had one year existence. And the common market was very exciting for boys like us who, you know, who feel that there was, that was a territory of freedom for those who would be able to forget their egotism, and, you know. So I think these two words were déclencheur for me, at least. But you weren't out of school very long before you decided to start an alumni association. What, what, uh, what happened there? It sounds like you had a good time. Well, you know, when we, in June uh, 1960, we were 50 boys alone, uh, the first promotion, and we, we, had, we, we, were, we had the very strong hope that there would be a second promotion, and we felt that we had to make a link between us, the 50, and the second promotion. So we, we, we thought that if we wanted to create something for the future, we, the first thing we, we had to do is to make the link with the second promotion. And that was just the, the, the idea. And then the money came from, were you involved right away, Monsieur Gauthier, with raising the money? Oh, no. Um... As Jean-Marie uh, said, uh, Harvard was something which was our model thinking mm -hmm. at the time, and we were explained that uh, Harvard and uh, the other uh, important uh, American business schools were financed largely, not entirely, but uh, to, to a substantial part by their alumni. So the, uh, the idea of alumni financing the school came with the concept of the school. It was too early at the very beginning, but uh, in uh, 76, I think, I started the, with the idea again. I, uh, at the time, uh, Piet van Weyenberg was the uh, president of the uh, Alumni Association, and I suggested to him that we should uh, uh, look at the possibility of uh, creating sort of structure to uh, try and convince the alumni that they should 
uh, give some money to 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 insert. And it was a very modest uh, starting in uh, 76, 77. Uh, 200,000 francs for the first year. <laughs> uh, so I'm very um, impressed when I see the uh, present results after, uh, what is it, 20, 30, 30, 33 years. And my successors have done a very good job in uh, continuing the Alumni Fund initiative. What about some of the events that they're doing? What do you think of the Alumni Club today? Is it the way you had imagined it's being? I think what is, what is working more in the, in the national associations are the clubs, you know, the clubs uh, which are uh, issued from those associations, but which usually are just uh, created by volunteers and uh, who do what they want after all. Uh, we had the idea about 10 years ago uh, that uh, we could um, uh, get together with the people who had more availability because of uh, retiring partly or totally f from the business. You get to the serious business of having a party. Exactly. I know it's important to you to, for the Alumni Association to have small regional chapters because it has to be difficult to organize such a huge international group. So. How, how do you see this happening, the organization? You, 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 you ask how the Alumni Association, which was when Jean-Marie created it, uh, a, a, a unique association, yeah, yeah. Be became decentralized. Yeah, that came in the, in the early 70s, I think, when uh, the number of alumni uh, started to be uh, significant. and. We, the, uh, we realized at the time that it was necessary to have local organizations, that we could no, no longer act as a unique centralized association. So that was uh, the start of this. Uh, of this. And uh, finally, I don't remember exactly when, but probably 72, 73, the uh, association was designed as a federation of national associations. And all, most of the activities, nearly all the activities, are uh, developed and uh, operated at national levels. So it's probably more productive. Oh yes, yes. it's impossible. I mean, to to have real activities for two thousand or three thousand uh, people yeah. uh, all around the world. No, more, having... more, more than ten thousand now. <laughs> more than ten thousand. <laughs> Are you <laughs> we were 50. <laughs> well, okay, so it's grown. Now, are you happy with the level of funding that you're getting? Uh, I'm no longer involved in, uh, I started it, I chaired the IAF uh, 11 years, uh, but I'm no longer in, involved. No, we, we can never be uh, totally satisfied. The, to my knowledge, uh, the uh, number of, the, the, the percentage of the alumni uh, giving to uh, giving to the IAF is still around fifteen percent, which is not That's not a lot, uh, not, not, a lot much, uh, not no. satisfactory. Yeah, get on however, the however, some uh, of the of the contributions, some of the gifts are are, are very significant, mm -hmm. and globally, uh, the amount which is now uh, raised by IAF. Uh, is a significant contribution to INSEAD budget. Let me end by asking you what it meant to you to have to go to school at, at, at INSEAD. I mean, you were working for Texaco, you went to INSEAD, and then you entered an entirely different field. Yeah. So what did it mean to you to go? What, how has it affected your life? Well, it was an enormous opening on, uh, on business life, and uh, uh, yes, uh, I, I, I left uh, the oil business for the advertising. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, it's obvious that when you, you have a, an advertising agency, uh, one of the main problems is to find the clients mm -hmm. and um, the, the, the net, the web of the alumni was a very, very, uh, big uh, and strong uh, 
um, possibility of resources to to get uh, in touch with uh, people and uh, so I, I I had quite a few clients who who were uh, alumni in different countries. Monsieur Gauthier, how about you? I, I agree with Jean Marie. The, the the major point with the opening that INSEAD gave. Uh, of course, the content of the teaching was certainly useful, but what, what, what is at most uh, useful has been the network, the, the, network, the alumni network uh, through which we have had uh, uh, business contacts uh, all over the world. We have had friends all over the world, and through this uh, uh, opening to Europe, I even uh, found a wife. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that that was really the um, yes this uh, this possibility of having friends and contacts in every in every at least European countries. May I say one thing about that? Uh, I think that a good idea for the international association who doesn't uh, do very much. I mean, uh, they, because they cannot, uh, would be to produce a little booklet where you would have for the 40 or 50 uh, main countries, uh, the, the dates at which they meet for lunch. You know, most of them, they have a monthly lunch uh, where they meet. And uh, if we had a booklet where, and we know that every uh, first uh, Thursday of the month, uh, there is a lunch at, in London and uh, another in Frankfurt. And that, that would be interesting when we go to London or to New York to know that at such day we can meet uh, the, the, the alumni of, of the, the country. You could do it by internet, you know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe it's better to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both very much for being with us. We appreciate it. Our pleasure. <laughs> Thank you.